Welcome back to a new episode of Dev Drawer. Just to kind of recap what we did last week, we um, created the authorization tokens in order to use our API, um, and we made it where you had to generate the API using the authorization um, route. So today, we're going to be taking what we did last week and actually tying it into the front end so that I can show you how to pass a authorization token through the headers uh, using Ajax. Uh, but before we get started, let me um, sit, just say I do appreciate all the comments and the likes and the new subscribers that I've gotten. You know, I, I love seeing the numbers go up every single day. Um, but if you haven't subscribed to this channel, definitely do. I have a lot of tutorials like this one. I mean, this tutorial by itself is probably four or five videos showing you different aspects of how to build an API from scratch, how to build it into a front end, how to basically build out this web app that we've been working on. So uh, again, if you haven't subscribed yet, definitely subscribe. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started into it. So the first thing I want to show you is we currently have these things that are working with authorization tokens. So if we click over here and we try it out, it generates this token for us. And if we paste this token into our authorized field, it uh, opens up all of these other ones now that we can come in here and actually be able to read it. So what we want to do is take this exact same functionality and apply it to here. So let's zoom out of this a little bit. There we go. So currently you, there's no navigation because if you remember from one of my past videos, um, I have it all being generated dynamically. So the template, the um, the page titles, the names, the descriptions, the links, everything's being generated from our API. So what I want to do now is make it where this information actually gets displayed. So let's jump into the code. I'm going to take away all of this stuff for now. And we are going to, let's close down the API. We're going to open up our app.js. And inside of this, we need to create a function that hits our authorization URL. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy this list pages just because it's be easier than having to rewrite the whole thing. And over here, I'm just going to title this function auth. And then before we call the list pages, I want to make sure it calls the auth in order to grab that um, that token for us. So we don't need to run anything inside of this because there's nothing going to be returned except for a token and a um, and a date for when it expires. So let's change this to our URL for the authorization, which if you will remember on this, it is API v1 pages auth so API v1 pages auth and that's where we want to get um, so we're not going to be sending anything over to it if you were using this as part of a login you'd be sending a username and password to it but for right now we're not worrying about any of this we're just displaying the data and grabbing that token um, so once we post to the authorization we want to see what it's returning so I'm going to do console dot log and then I'm just going to log out everything that's being pushed over through this call so let me open up this and I'm gonna open up the inspector let's go to our console and refresh it so currently let's take this away because we don't want it doing that right now do a hard refresh and as you can see here it's gathering the token that's exactly what is produced in on this side of it so if we try this out and we execute it you can see that it's passing over the token in the expires which is what we are seeing here so expires and token that is what we want to see inside of this and let me just make sure that y'all can see that okay just verifying that that was there all right so now we know that we want to store this token somewhere and the easiest way to do that would be to set it as a local storage um, I guess a session for the local storage so what we're going to do here is using jQuery local storage dot set item and then we're going to set the, the variable token and we're going to pass data dot token because that's what's coming back from our data so now if we come back over here and we go to our application local storage 
API local, let's do a refresh, we can see that that token is now being set with the value that's being gathered. So now that we have that value, we want to pass it as part of the headers for the other functionality that we have down here. So we're going to add a new variable called headers. And inside of this, we're going to pass a JSON string that is going to be called authorization. Because if you remember back whenever we created that part of it, uh, the authorization was the token that we were looking for. So we're going to pass authorization, and it's just going to be local storage dot get item and then it's going to be token because that's what we called it at the top and then put a comma after that so now if we go back to our browser let's do a hard refresh and oh, that's because I forgot to call list pages let's uncomment that back out now we do a hard refresh you can see that our navigation is here the content of the pages are still not there so we need to also take the part that we're doing the content and we need to add this one line to it and that would be done inside of our initialize.js and let's pass it right before the success do a hard refresh again uh, let's see what's going on here console so it's not being found okay well um I, tr I tried out a few things and um, it wasn't actually anything wrong with the code um, it was just not loading the initialize.js so the way that I fixed that was I opened up a new window um, slash js slash initialize.js and it was now it's pulling over what we wanted it to with the authorization headers so I don't know why uh, sometimes it does that way where even if I do a hard refresh it still doesn't load it properly so just browsing out to the initialize.js and then refreshing the page made it grab the information that it needed to. Um, but as you can see over here, it's now pulling the information from the pages. So we're going to go over here into our Swagger UI and we are going to update this right here because part of our test last week we actually changed it where it says HTML only. So we're going to change this to this is the about us page and let's capitalize this execute it make sure everything was updated so now if we refresh now it changes so it's currently hitting the API correctly based on the um, the local storage of it grabbing that token that we needed to so um, essentially that's what I wanted to show y'all in this video I know this was kind of a short video but this was probably the easier part of setting up the tokenization um, from last week. Last week it took about 40 minutes to record that video. Um, so this one's probably going to be a lot shorter than that, maybe 15 minutes or so. But um, essentially we just add in the script to create the authorization or go to the authorization route. We grab the information, we set it as a local storage um, item, and then we use that as part of our headers for the list pages to display the list up here as well as the individual pages to display the content for each page so that's about it um, let me think so like I said in the previous video this video you wouldn't necessarily use it for the front end access of the website the front end access of the website would be using this functionality or you know the read or the single without the authorization involved in it. The only thing that you would need authorization for is to be able to log into an administration panel to modify the create, the update, or the delete function. Um, so for right now, I have it all kind of combined into one, but just keep that in mind whenever you're developing it because right now we're generating this authorization code without anything actually being input into it, which isn't the most secure way to do it, but I was just kind of showing you how to do it. Uh, the way that you would actually do it with an actual CRUD application would be where you pass the username and the password whenever they go to submit a form. Then it will run this route here. It will gather the information um, for the token and then as part of the token, whenever you're passing that token back to the system, you can create an, an encrypted version of their, um, their email address, their user ID, um, the level that they are inside of the system you know there's a lot of stuff that you can do and you can pass as part of that encrypted 
um, token. But for right now, it's just I'm just showing you how to actually use it on the front end and the back end. But again, this isn't the normal way that you would do it, but this is kind of just taking what we've already done and building onto it. Um, so I know this was a short one, uh, but hopefully you learned something from it and you learned out how to build out the, uh, I think this is the final version of the API series. Maybe we'll go in there and build out something where we actually build the CRUD application part where there's a login, authentication, all that kind of stuff set with it. Uh, but for now, I think I'm going to go ahead and call this part of it as done. Um, if you liked this video, smash the thumbs up for me. Let me know that you liked it. If you didn't like it, leave me a comment uh, in the comments below, and I'll try to make something better. If you have any suggestions of what you would like for me to do, you know, leave a comment for that as well. I am more than open to listen and try to figure out how to help you guys. So for now, I think that's going to be it. I do appreciate it, and um, I'll talk to you later.